Hi, my name is Justin Sun. I'll be talking about Orange Canvas. Is This is a visual programming environment for data mining. So why use Orange? Orange is free and open source, and no programming is needed. Although if you really want to write software, uh, Python code, you can. It's a visual programming environment, it's interactive, and it's easy to try new experiment, you know, experiment with new visualizations and machine learning algorithms. There are add-ons for bioinformatics network analysis, such as social network analysis and text processing. This is an example of a complete program in Orange. On the left, you see the file. There's data going into the classification tree and a scatter plot. Um, the classification tree graph will show you the results of running the classification tree algorithm. And finally, we have an attribute statistics um, link. A little bit about the history. Orange was a university project. Started in 1996 um, with C++ algorithms. Python was added shortly afterwards, and a GUI based on PyQt was available about 10, 11 years ago. In uh, 2013, Orange Canvas 2.7 was a major redesign. So at the high-level architecture, we have algorithms written in C++ at the bottom. Um, right above that, we have Python integration, and at the highest level, the visual programming. To install Orange, we can simply go to the website orange.biolab.si. Um, the package comes with everything you will need to install, um, for example, NumPy, SciPy, PyQt, and other required libraries. This is just a screenshot from the Orange website. Uh, yes. So, um, There are installation packages for both um, Windows and Mac. This is an example of some of the widgets that are available. On the left, you see the um, data widget. Uh, and um, we have data going from file to data table. And this is an example of a scheme that you can build. Um, besides data, you can also look at visualizations, so scatter plots, linear projections, parallel coordinate survey plots, etc. cetera. Um, unsupervised learning, classification, so we'll go over an um, example in the demo, and some add-ons for network analysis and text mining. Uh, bioinformatics, if anyone is in that field, um, you'll recognize some of the names. So let's do a quick demo. So if I were to create a new program, I'll add the data first. So this is the file widget. Double clicking on the file widget, I can select the data to import. In this case, we're importing the iris data set. There are 150 examples. Um, there are four columns and one class variable. I'm sure. Um, let's see if this is better. Is this better? I guess I need to, um, I'll just hold this then. Um, so we have the file, and I can add a data table. So, I actually need both hands to 
connect them together. So here we have file um, and data table connected. If I double click on the data table, you'll see um, the actual data. So this has four attributes. We have sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, and three classes of um, iris flowers. So we have iris setosa in blue. If I scroll down, you'll see iris versicolor in red, and iris virginica in green. The question was, where did the data come from? Orange Canvas comes with a standard set of, um, a standard number of data sets. Um, these are classic data sets that are also available in packages such as R. Um, so I just uh, checked off one of the existing data sets. How did you make the connection between the file and the file? Okay, great question. So what I did was I dragged from the right-hand side of file, I clicked and dragged to connect to the left-hand side of data table. So the right-hand side represents the output, the left-hand side is the input to the next widget. So think of them as pipes, so we're connecting um, data that flows from one place to another. Yes. That's a great question. So um, the file is built in, but I do have an example of what it looks like. Um, this would be the raw file. It's a tab separated text file um, with three header rows. So we label each of the attributes and then um, there's an indicator to determine if it's continuous or discrete. And then finally on the third row we indicate the class variable is the last column. Um, so that's an example of going from file to data table. I can also visualize. So we can also drag and drop items. So here's a scatter plot. Starting at file, I'm going to connect that to the scatter plot. Now notice that you have data flowing from the file to the data table as well as data flowing to the scatter plot. In this case, the data is a copy. So you, you won't have, for example, part of the data in one widget and part of it in the other widget. We have all of the data in scatterplot. So um, this is a typical scatterplot. We have sepal width on the x axis and sepal length on the y axis. And the color is the class. So remember we had iris setosa, iris versicolor, and iris virginica um, as the blue, red, and green. There is an option if you have um, more attributes, it might be um, difficult to see how, um, what the interesting two-dimensional plots are. And there is a, a nice option called VisRank, which will determine the interesting ones for you. So if I run VisRank, it's found that petal length and petal width generate a nice separation between the three classes. And as I go down the list, in terms of interestingness, it goes, um, it gets harder and harder to separate the green and the red. So if you start at the at the top, if you had, for example, um, maybe um, 10 or 15 attributes, um, this would be a very useful tool. So like a cooking show, um, let's imagine that we baked this and now 30 minutes later, I have the final product. Um, so in, in addition to the scatter plot, I have um, attribute statistics. So um, you can see the mean, median, min, max, and 25th and 75th percentiles. And here I've added the classification tree. That's found under the classify tab. So in this case, we're taking the default values and we're generating a classification tree based on the iris data. 
and this is the result. Um, in a classification tree, we're taking all of the example data and we're determining rules that can separate the classes. Um, so in this example, um, if I hover over this, um, it says, if petal width is less than 0 0.8, then predict iris setosa. And similarly, if petal width is greater than 0.8, then predict one of the other two colors. One of the interactive features is the ability to connect selections from one widget to another. And I just wanted to give a quick example. So if I select For example, iris setosa, um, all of the iris setosa examples show up in the scatter plot on the right. And if I select um, this item, then we see the other two selected. So this is um, just an overview of some of the things that you can do. Um, I have one other example I wanted to show you. This is um, to test the and evaluate different learners. So in this scheme, we're taking the same iris data set. Um, we're taking a sample of the data. If I double click on data sample, we have um, two-thirds of the data are getting selected. We also run the classification tree algorithm and we generate the graph. Um, in addition to running the algorithm, I'm also using test learners, which will take the input from, uh, the output from the, um, the two different classification methods and evaluate those methods. So here we have the data um, coming into uh, the test learners. So if I double click, um, we are seeing the comparison of naive bays and the classification tree. And we have certain performance scores, including the classification accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, and area under the curve. Um, you can also select some of these others, which are not all selected. Now, one of the common things that you might do is uh, you'll want to try many different examples and remember what you've done. Um, there's a feature called report, which will help you remember um, the different um, activities. So if I click report, this will add in, for example, that I open the file. that we've run a sample. And we have a, perhaps a classification tree graph that we want to save in the report. And then you can print out the report or you can save it. Um, you can use it for um, uh, reference later. Okay, finally, um, yes, question. So the naive base is using, um, so test learners takes all of the data in, and we have um, options for uh, the evaluation. We have, in this case, chosen cross-validation with 10 folds. Uh, what that means is we will take 90% of the data, um, so we divide the data set, the entire data set, into 10 chunks. And in each of 10 runs, we will withhold uh, one of the folds. So 10% is held out as a test. 90% is used for training. Um, we'll repeat that 10 times and take the average. So that's how the um, numbers are calculated. You can also use um, leave one out. And this is actually recalculating and re redoing the evaluation. Um, you can do random sampling and um, 
test on training data, which is not recommended. Okay, another question? The data is file-based. Um, the question was, can it be um, live, live data or database data? In the next version of Orange, Orange 3, there will be support for databases. Um, in the current version, there's an experimental widget that you can use to select data from a table. Um, so I just wanted to uh, wrap up with uh, those who actually want to code. Um, I have a very quick example. You can actually write um, import orange in Python. And in this case, we're doing, um, we're just outputting the, um, the summary stats similar to the attribute statistics widget. Okay, and um, to conclude, I just want to leave you with some resources. Um, the best resource is probably the Orange website itself. Um, there's some tutorials, interactive network analysis um, uh, paper, and a white paper on scripting. Thank you very much.